Ready? Ready. All right. travelers and welcome back to another episode here at Tourist to Local. My name is Juliana and for the past few episodes you've seen my husband Martin and I traveling across Southeast Asia on our honeymoon. So far we've seen Thailand and Malaysia and now we've made it to Singapore. This city is also a country and an expensive one at that. It is notorious for being one of the most expensive countries in Asia but with good reason. Singapore is incredibly advanced and is so easy to get around. In this video, we'll be showing you a guide to three full days in Singapore. If you saw our last video, you'll know that we just arrived by bus from Malaysia. The bus broke down. So it's time to fuel up and start exploring. It's our first full day here in Singapore, and we decided to take a stroll to the Arabic neighborhood. This was just a couple of blocks from where we're staying. I've heard really amazing things about the food in this area, and they have a lot of really cute cafes, especially on what they call Haji Lane. It's this small little lane that has shops, cafes, and lots of artwork, it's super cute. But before we go there, we are just checking out the mosque that's here. It is so stunning. And at the bottom of each of the domes, you'll see these round circles. Those are actually the bottom of glass bottles because when they were building this, they believed that no matter how rich you were, you could contribute in some way. So people would bring uh, glass bottles to help build the domes. We are going to grab a bite to eat and then head to our next spot. It wouldn't be a visit to the Arabic neighborhood without trying some Arabic coffee. Now, as we were walking around, we noticed a lot of things were closed, which is surprising because it is 9, 15 a.m. on a Saturday. Uh, so we just went for what we saw was open, and it's actually super cute. It's called Percent Arabica, and it's so minimalistic, super trendy, and they look like they know how to do coffee. I haven't tried a sip yet, but I got a latte with oat milk. My team got a macchiato espresso and then we each got our own little pastries as well. Uh, I am still on the search though for a traditional Singapore breakfast, so hopefully we can put that in tomorrow. But for now, we're just keeping it basic with our coffee and my almond croissant. Next stop for us is Little India. Our Airbnb is located just Actually, it's within this neighborhood, and it is a definite must-stop place to go when you're here in Singapore. This neighborhood is so vibrant, it's a great place to buy souvenirs, and there's so many authentic food options. We have nowhere specifically in mind, but one thing we've been told to look out for is restaurants that have lots of newspapers in front of the window. That means it's a good place to go, so we're on the lookout for a place like that. Okay, so we found a spot to get lunch, and not only did we find a spot, we found a Michelin star spot, and it's called Bismillah Biryani Restaurant, and prices are great. There's lots of really, really great looking options. We ordered a bunch of different things, and so I'm just gonna try a little bit of everything. I don't eat Indian food much, so I didn't really know what to order. They had little stars, though, next to some of the popular dishes, and I'm so excited to try it and be adventurous. So, let's see how it is. The food was delicious and now we're off to our next destination, which is the perfect time to talk a little bit about how to get around Singapore. Now, of course, you can use Grab here like we have been using most of our trip, but their public transportation system in Singapore is awesome. There's metros and buses, the maps are super easy to read, and you can purchase the tickets at the station. And there's a lot of stations. We're taking the downtown line to go to our next spot. It's the Blue Line, and our Airbnb host recommended buying the Easy Link Pass, which is $12 each. And it's a great way to be able to have a pass and quickly go on and off public transportation. Um, or you can just buy single tickets as well, which I think is what we're gonna do because a lot of the places we're visiting in the future are within walking distance. So each of our single tickets was $2, and we're gonna go ride the line. be a trip to Singapore without visiting this iconic building. It's the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. This building is so, so popular. You've probably seen it online. And it's very well known for its rooftop pool, which offers a spectacular view of the city. Now, of course, that is only available to people who are staying at the hotel. So we figured we would get as close as we can to be able to see its architectural beauty. Now, in this area, there's also a bunch of other really, really cool looking buildings. So we're just kind of walking around and strolling, looking at it all and dreaming 
of the day that we could actually afford to stay somewhere like that. Um, we're gonna keep exploring around and try to find somewhere to take cover because it is about to rain. Raining, but we're not letting it ruin our day. Right? <laughs> actually, it's better. <laughs> it's now finally super cool, but yeah, everything's not gonna look too pretty from from the next couple shots, guys. So just bear with us, but we are enjoying it and having an awesome honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> It's pouring rain. <laughs> so we have a goal that is go to the Art Science Museum that is over there because that's the perfect activity for a rainy day. <laughs> the problem is we have to go all over there. So I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we will. <laughs> it's for you guys. <laughs> Update, we're almost there. But the rain is harder than ever before and there's no shelter except for this solar panel. But we're not gonna let it ruin our day. No, no. <laughs> For two years, so good. <laughs> we made it to the Art Science Museum and actually dried off in the mall next door. Bought Martina a new shirt, and now we are here. We're going to the Future World exhibit here, which is one of the three exhibits you can visit. It costs $12 per person, and I'm excited to go inside. All right, so we already entered the doors, and one of our first missions is to color in our favorite animal. Which is cool, right? But it doesn't stop just there. We get to scan it and it shows up on a screen and starts moving around and comes to life. I'm excited to see my character come to life. Gotta make sure it's good. I totally love it. It's super cool. Such an awesome place. Totally recommend it by Cherry's to Welcome. <laughs> Alright, we finished up at the Art Science Museum. It was super cool. We loved how interactive it is. If you're traveling with kids, totally bring them there. It was so much fun. And if you're a kid at heart, you're gonna love it too. Also, right next to the Art Science Museum is a mall. That's actually where we dried off for the majority of the day. And I'm telling you, if you haven't been to a mall in Asia, this is the one you need to go to. All the malls we've seen so far on this trip have been insane, but this one definitely stood out. I couldn't believe the designer stores that were here, and I felt a little bit out of place, but you know what? They had a Zara, I strolled through there. I tried the free samples at Sephora, and then I made my way out. It's definitely a really cool place to explore around. Also, they have a Louis Vuitton Island right there that you enter through the mall, and it takes you there. Man, it's so luxurious here. And now we're going to head back to our Airbnb, and right below our Airbnb is a dim sum place that's had a huge line ever since we've arrived, and that must mean it's good. So we're gonna check it out and see how it is. Let's go. Right now they give me an exam, but I didn't have any time to study, so I'm a little bit worried. Everything has been so delicious so far, but this sweet and sour pork has stolen the show. It is so much more flavorful than any sweet and sour pork I've ever had before. Also we have this noodle dumpling soup. We have carrot cake, which is not like the carrot cake you guys are probably used to. It's way fishier and not so much pastry. And then we also had some honey barbecue pork bun things. Everything is delicious and I think we still have one more thing. Oh, two more things we're expecting. I didn't expect this much food. That was the most delicious Chinese food I've ever had and I've been to China. This place is so good and you can also tell they have newspapers cut out and hanging on the windows. So that's how you know. The favorite thing that we tried was the shrimp mango fried roll. Oh my god, it was so delicious. We are stuffed and we're headed back to our Airbnb. We'll see you guys tomorrow. day in Singapore and we decided to head to Garden by the Bay which is another iconic spot you have to visit. Now a lot of the garden is free to walk around but there are a couple of attractions that do cost to enter including the Cloud Forest which is where we are now. 
currently 9.20 a.m. and we made sure we were one of the first people to arrive here because it does get pretty crowded. And right now we kind of have the place to ourselves besides a couple of other couples here taking some photos. It is so cold in here, which is perfect for a hot day. We're gonna explore around and show you what else there is to see at Garden by the Bay. up at the cloud forest oh my god this place is awesome if you're the type of person that likes botanical gardens and flowers you're going to love this place you could spend hours strolling around here and looking at all the beautiful plants there's also a lot of really uh, cool walks you can do here as well we're on the treetop walk there's also one way up there where you can see everything from up above apparently this place does fill up with clouds at some point or mist we haven't seen it yet we're probably here too early but regardless uh, I love it so much here. We have some other parts of the park we wanna explore as well. So we're gonna to head to the Flower Dome next. Next stop for us is the Super Tree Grove. This place is free to enter and I'm sure you guys recognize these iconic tree tops that you've seen online. It is so stunning in person. And we're even gonna be coming back here at nighttime to see the night show. And when we do come back, we do plan to do this treetop walk up here, which does cost to enter, but I heard it's the best way to get to see this place at night. Also, you get a stunning view of the Marina Bay Sands, which we can see without the rain, which is very nice. And I'm loving strolling around here. This place is huge. Last stop in the Garden by the Bay is the Flower Dome. This is another attraction that you have to pay for to enter, and it is actually the world's largest greenhouse. It has so many different plants from all over the world. And luckily for us, we're here on March 8th. Today is actually my birthday, by the way. I forgot to mention it. This is the best birthday ever. They are having a cherry blossom festival for the very first time here. So we're able to see the blooming cherry blossoms, which has been a bucket list thing of mine for a long time. And one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that Gardens by the Bay is super into educating people about helping our world and making it a better place. They talk a lot about global warming and how to make sure that our planet is sustainable. They talk a little bit about the little things that you can do to make this world a better place to live. It is such a great educational experience. It's made me think a lot about things. So I wanted to mention that as well, that this place uh, is making an impact on the world. We just found that there's Alice in Wonderland, so it's my, one of my favorite books. He's freaking out. <laughs> so yeah. it's not only Alice, we can see a couple of characters from there. I am laughing at the name of this exhibit. That, whoever made that name, I want to be friends with them. Next stop for us is the Maxwell Food Center. This is one of the city's famous hawkers or food courts that you can visit during your time here. It's a great place to try all sorts of different types of food. Now here in front of me, I found something. I have no idea what it is. I think our Airbnb host recommended trying it, but I'm not 100% sure what it even is. But on one of the stalls I was at, they said it's like Singapore specialty. It's called fried kuei tiao. And it looks like it's noodled and something with meat. I don't know. We're gonna try it. And Martin got, what did you get? Oh, it's duck. Yeah, it looks delicious. So I found out uh, what I ordered is actually super popular in Malaysia and Singapore. Not only does it have noodles, it also has a variety of seafood and something called bloody cockles. It tastes really good. Honestly, it reminds me a little bit of Pad Thai. Um, so yeah, that's what this is. There is a lot of things in here. So it is a smorgasbord of flavor and one of Singapore's most well-known dishes. Another iconic neighborhood that you have to visit is Chinatown. It's actually right across from the Maxwell Food Center and it is full of so much culture. It's a great place for shopping, eating Chinese food, and enjoying the nightlife of Singapore. <laughs> We're currently at the House of Durian in Chinatown where they sell a bunch of things durian flavored. And we asked, do you have any fresh ones? And they have one piece left. 
and um, it smells terrible, just as terrible as everybody said. It's very sticky. Hmm. What does it taste like? Onion, garlic, cheese. That's exactly what it tastes like. Really? Onion, garlic, cheese. He said it, and it's it's a hundred percent true. Yes, it tastes like onion, garlic, cheese. I don't like it, but it does taste like onion, garlic, and cheese. Anyway, now we can say we did it. Don't eat the seed. You can eat everything. Oh, it's okay. I think I'm done. <laughs> Next stop was a little bit of a surprise for me. It is my birthday today, and Martine planned the most amazing surprise. We're at a rooftop bar, and it is so beautiful. Best of all, it is a casual environment, and man, the view is stunning. I'm so happy to get to spend my birthday evening here. Singapore and we're starting our day off with a traditional breakfast at Yakun Kaya Toast. This place is actually located in the Bugis Junction, which is a mall here. Now Kaya Toast is a traditional Singapore breakfast of toast, coconut jam, and eggs. And we bought a set that also included coffee at a super affordable price, and we're gonna enjoy it. Ow. First off, we just finished our breakfast. It was probably the most delicious breakfast we've had on our entire trip, which at first when I saw the menu, I was like, okay, kaya toast, this looks really simple, but it is so good. Oh my God, the jam that they use inside, the coconut jam is delicious. This coffee itself is so thick and creamy. We love it. Um, and not only that, it's so affordable and super, super authentic. So definitely stop all that. Wait, tell us everything that's going on okay, right now. Okay, they have a different way to to make the coffee. And it's so strange, but it tastes so good. So they put some um, coconut jelly, condensed milk, and then they put it so it's really black. So then they mix it up, and then they put this. So you can <laughs> take it in your, It's so funny, but it's, it tastes so good. Tell them what else we bought just now. We saw at the counter. The coconut jelly. We're gonna try to make our own at home. We will. <laughs> Next on our list is visiting the Singapore Zoo. That's our main activity for today. We took the metro as far north as possible on the red line and then hopped a shuttle bus that takes you directly to the zoo. This zoo is really cool because it specializes not only in animals from all over the world, but a lot of ones that are found on the continent of Asia. And there's a lot of animals here that I had never seen before. It's a super educational experience and we're having a great time. that I have not tried on my trip yet is satay. It is a popular dish in Malaysia and Singapore. It's basically a meat skewer. Lucky for us, we were at a place called Satay by the Bay, which definitely has satay. And it's right next to Gardens by the Bay, which means it's super accessible to you guys when you come and visit here. Lots of other traditional food is here as well in this market. Anyway, we're fueling up before we head to the light show at the Super Trees. And that happens every day at 7.45 and 8.45 p.m. I'm excited to be back here at nighttime and get to see it. I'm hoping it doesn't rain. And it is free to watch, uh, but we are going to do the treetop walk, which does cost money, because I want to see it from up there. Anyway, time to try this. See you guys in a bit. Our final day in Singapore. We actually just have a half day here. We woke up super early to head to the Singapore airport because this is one of the things we've been looking forward to most on our trip. The Singapore airport is known as one of the best airports in the entire world because of its incredible amenities. I've also noticed how technologically advanced this airport is. We went through immigration and it didn't require talking to a single person. It was all automated. The security was super fast and it's basically like a mall in here. There's so many stores. This airport is also known for its amenities such as a 
free movie theater, a waterfall, a butterfly garden, a rooftop pool, a place where you can make your own custom cocktails, a huge slide, and free massage chairs. Now doesn't that sound incredible to do during a layover? So we came early to experience all those things, but what we didn't realize is that we would be in Terminal 4, which is where none of that stuff is. <laughs> that is all located in Terminal 1, 2, and 3, and Terminal 4 is far away from that. We had to take a bus here. So we don't get to experience all those cool things that we wanted to show you in this video. We are going to be layovering in Singapore later on in our trip, so maybe we'll get to see those things and throw in some clips, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, this terminal is super cool as well. There's a mall, lots of food options. We're gonna be enjoying the lounge and we're just gonna make the most of it. Update, we did make it into the Jewel after all. On our way home to the United States, we layovered in Singapore again and this time our flight left out of Terminal 1. What we found out is that you can actually visit the cool part of the airport, it's called the Jewel and you actually don't need to be going through security to enter there. So we could have gone through here before when we were stationed in Terminal 4 and just seen it and then went back to our terminal. But it is so cool. We're going to explore around. You guys are going to see a couple of clips. Oh How's it feel? <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> and it's free. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope you guys loved it and this gave you some inspiration to create your own memorable vacations. Hopefully some of these things came to use to you. Make sure you check out my channel to see all of our other videos of Southeast Asia. So far we've been all over Thailand to Malaysia and now here. Thank you again for always watching and supporting. We love you guys. So long, travel well, and make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye.